Hi guys, welcome to another video on Tech with Chakur. Now today we are going to take a step forward in our system design journey and we are going to discuss a very common topic, storage. Now we have been hearing about data since the medieval times. But back then the data story was pretty much sorted. If you re remember your data science lessons, if you remember your database lessons correctly, we used to have those cute tables of employees records or students record you know which student which subject which marks and things like that but today the landscape has changed drastically and that again is an understatement we've been generating humongous amounts of data which is getting generated at petabytes per second so that is huge right we don't just need a storage we need an efficient storage to store this data so today in this lecture, we're going to discuss what are the different kinds of storage available in the industry. So let's get started. Now the first one is file storage. Now file storage you all might be familiar of. We've been using file storage since we started using computers. Yes, this is the one that stores all your local files inside the computer. It follows a hierarchical model. As we all know, we have files inside folders and inside folders. So this follows an hierarchical model. You can think of it like a huge file room, which might have racks. So this might be a rack. You, you have seen libraries, right? This right, rack might have drawers. So let's say this is one drawer. Now this drawer might have some folders. So this be, be a folder. Now this folder might have pages. So this pages store your file. So this is the final file. Now this file, now the key thing here is this file is stored in one single piece. This, this is one piece and it is stored at one location. Now this file has an address. So suppose this is a file in your computer. So it might have an address C colon documents slash very important documents slash very very important documents and slash a file dot txt. So this is the address to your file. If you want to access your file, you just simply go to this address, right? So far so simple, right? Good. Now what happens when you want to share this file or somebody else using his laptop wants to sh see this file? What happens then? Now the problem is this address is not present in this computer. So if he enters this address, he won't, he won't be able to access the file. Now in order to do so, there is a concept called NAS. So file storage is alternatively called as NAS. NAS is network area storage. So in order to share files, these guys need to be in a network. Network as in this could be connected by a LAN cable or any other network device. So this could be this. These guys need to be in a network. Now this network, what it will enable is it will keep this file in a shared repository. It will create, create basically a folder inside this computer as well as the same folder will be created inside this computer. Now this folder is a shared repository. Anything inside this folder will have access to both of the computers. So if I store this file inside this folder, I can see it on this laptop. All right. This is it. This is everything about file storage. But there is one complexity. Now, since I mentioned in the starting, the data is not that simple today. We have humongous amount of data and the network won't be restricted to just two laptops. Now what happens when I replace these two laptops by thousands of computers? And this file is not in KVs. This file is in gigabytes. So this is a gigabyte file. Now all these thousands of computers are trying to access this file using one network. So what happens? Your network is gone. Your network is choked in, sing in milliseconds. It will take milliseconds to bring your entire network down. So this kind of storage is very good if you have a small team. You have a small data center which has small files and you want to share these files and you want to have a shared repository. So this kind of storage is used where you have shared repositories and small teams. All right. Now moving on to the next kind of storage, which is a more advanced storage which is called block storage. Now block storage disclaimer. This is by far the best storage that is there in the market in terms of latency. 
latency means time of retrieval if i want to retrieve some data files how much time does the storage system takes to retrieve that so that is called latency so this storage is the best storage out there in the market as far as latency is considered it has lowest latency possible this is the trademark of block storage now why what makes the block storage so much efficient let's deep dive now a single most problem that was there in the file storage was this storage was that every information was getting stored in a single piece at one location that was a problem what block storage did was suppose i want to store this file which is of the size of gig gig gigabytes so it did it break down this file into blocks these blocks are of evenly sized these are evenly sized so the, this is this thing is called as block this thing is called a block everything is broken down into blocks basically chunks now that's not the end of it anyone can break down a file into small blocks that's not anything rocket science right so what makes it so efficient is that there is storage suppose this is storage and this is your user this user wants to store some file this is a file and he wants to store this or retrieve this any any uh, uh, thing possible now what happens traditionally was this user's os or the operating system where the user is using used to make this request of retrieval as well as storage so the problem here was this os is busy in a lot of stuff this is user os is busy in a lot of stuff and it has to make this request now this request is getting your files from the storage location what block storage did what it added a middle layer now there is a middle layer here this middle layer is basically your sam so any request that the user makes goes through this sam this sam is known as server area network now this server area network is nothing but a group of servers it could be a group of servers or even a single server so this there is a server inside this okay this server is nothing but an os it is an operating system it could be anything it could be windows it could be linux anything or it could it could be multiple os multiple servers so this guy could be a windows server this guy could be a linux server anything okay so this is your sam layer now what happens any request that the user wants to make suppose he wants to save some file so it goes through this sam network and the storage is replaced by one it's not one single entity anymore it is replaced by which is what is known as volumes so these are independent volumes now what is a volume volume is nothing but a hard drive you can picture it like a hard disk you have those hard disk right hdd sdd all those things so this is nothing but a hard disk now when i say independent means these are not connected to each other but they are connected to their respective servers it could be connected to single server it could be connected to multiple servers all right so these are volumes volumes are my storage devices now here's a cool thing so volume anything i want to save this is a request which is coming from the user he wants to save this file so what sam will do it will break down this file into blocks so i have now equal size blocks this is my block now this block is not stored at one place it broke down into multiple pieces it is not stored at one place it randomly distributes this sam randomly distributes the blocks as per the availability of these volumes the space availability or the availability of individual volumes it randomly distributes so basically your data is not stored at one location it is spread across spread across servers maybe spread across servers maybe spread across volumes suppose half of your data is in linux half of the data is in windows so you don't know where your data resides only the sam guy knows now the cool thing about this is when you are retrieving your sam os is responsible for the retrieval and the storage process which is independent of your users os so what sam has built is it has decoupled the process of storage and retrieval from the users os to a sam os all right so this makes the whole block storage a very efficient process you have decoupled the you have not involved users os in anything you are using a sing a series of uh, servers to store the information 
all right that's what block storage is it is by far the lowest latency possible and it is very much used in places where you need fast reads and writes so basically databases it is heavily used in databases when you need fast read and write outputs all right so uh, this is all about block storage moving on to another thing which is known as object storage this is the last category now you might wonder when we have trouble we have a hierarchical storage to store our files we have a block storage for databases is there anything left why do we need uh, another kind of object storage now the important thing in this is when this block was getting stored this block the only metadata what was stored was file location so this block had a file location i need that right when when the user is asking for my file uh, the retrieval process this san will get all the blocks and he, it needs to recompile right so it recompiles based on the file location so suppose i have stored in this volume if i show you this volume this volume might have a block another block this block would be of file 2 this block would be of file 1 so when the uh, user is asking for file 1 all the file 1 blocks will be called and when the user is asking for file 2 all the file 2 blocks will be called so the only metadata the only metadata that was stored was file location that was the key thing in uh, block storage but what object storage brought was suppose you want to perform some analytics or you want to sort your data by sort i mean suppose i don't want to see all the files i want to see the files created by shakul or i want to see the files created by shakul on thursday or maybe i want to see all the only the images created by shakul so you see I, in each layer i'm adding some kind of logic some kind of sorting logic some kind of analytics to the data now what uh, uh, now because i don't save any metadata in this so I can't perform this operation directly in block storage. For this, I will need another database, which will have records like file one and the metadata attached to it, date, uh, created by, and things like that. Now suppose the user is asking for file one, it will first query this database, get the metadata, get the file from SAN server, then combine them and then present it to the user. Add steps, right? we are adding hops. So we don't want this. So instead of this, when you want to perform analytics and sorting the data, you need object storage. The key things about object storage is, it follows the same strategy like the block storage. It follows block, uh, flat structure. Flat structure, uh, unlike the file storage which, ha which had hierarchical, uh, similar to block storage because everything was stored in one layer, everything was not, there was nothing called hierarchy. So it follows a block, uh, flat structure. But what happens in object storage? It doesn't randomly distribute all the blocks. So it also uh, divides a file into objects. These are basically chunks, similar to blocks everything similar to blocks so these objects are not stored randomly these are stored in a group so suppose this is my storage so all my uh, so this is my storage all my blocks uh, objects created to first file the file one will be stored at a single repository this is one repo all my objects will be stored at one place the second file comes all the objects will be stored at repo 2 so it stores all the objects at one place unlike this this was randomly distributing right based on the availability of the volumes but here that that doesn't happen the storage is constrained to one repository now uh, what happens the and it or it stores a lot of metadata attached with it so the metadata like file created by date type use and all those things all those things which what uh, when will this file be used what what is the metadata for this file all that thing is attached when it is stored within the repo so this repo has a metadata now this metadata will be used for querying anytime i want to uh, query this file structure i can i can very well use this metadata to uh, get a sorted result so that is why object storage is used 
Now all of these storage are available in cloud. So cloud uses object storage heavily. The use case for object storage will be cloud. The use case for block storage will be databases. The use case for file storage will be any place where you need shared repositories is the use case. So any single storage is not sufficient to provide everything. You need, uh, you may need all the three in a combination or you may need block storage as well as object storage in a combination. So these are the three kinds of storage that are required in the industry. So uh, that comes with the confusion of the video. Thanks a lot.